We're going to have another presenter. He's here from IAS, but he is not Filipino, though he is married to a Filipino. Uh, he is a PhD student in religion, and his major is applied theology. So he's the right person uh, to to talk about this. He's coming from the country of Uganda, and his presentation has the title of "On Seventh Day Adventist Church." Joining the ecumenical movement. Is this cooperation or compromise? Let's enjoy this presentation. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, maligayang Sabado. And of course to my friends from uh, Mindanao. Mayong hapon. Mayong adlaw ikpapahulay. Um, this is my first time to present in my life. And uh, when I had the lecture about publish or perish, I wanted to back out. <laughs> but it was too late already. I don't know, why didn't you give this before this? I would not come in. But I pray that I will not perish as I present. And um, I thought I would, uh, since I'm first timer, I thought I would present during lunch time, when everybody's gone for lunch. But they put me as last presenter. And in Africa, we say the last bean on the plate is the sweetest. <laughs> but I'm afraid mine might be the sourest. Oh, I don't know the opposite of that. I was enthusiastic to join because of their promotion. They said presenters will have free food and free t-shirt and, and free things. So I said, I might present, I must present something. And I have been enjoying the, the food until now, faithfully getting my share, and now it is payback time. Uh, I think I am a little bit in trouble because my topic seems to be the same with the previous presenter. And uh, he knew that we have the same topic, but he presented everything. Uh, I got into this topic, uh, this is not actually my area, I just got into this when I took a class with Dr. Tonalejo, Doctrine of the Church, and I almost got converted from uh, applied theology to historical, but it's just that he did not make an appeal. <laughs> if he made one, I, would, I, I was just waiting for the appeal. <laughs> he missed to do that. And, uh, during my class, Dr. Tonalejo did not ask any question. And I am expecting even now he will not ask any question. And when I presented this topic, it happened to be that one of my classmates had written on the same topic, uh, Leticia, she's right here. So when I presented, I didn't even go to say sorry because she came and said, oh, everything has been presented. And uh, the same thing has happened to me now. Something has been presented, I've written on. But um, as I read the paper of Pastor Christopher, it was very nice, and uh, I learned many new things, and I thought it is the same until my wife read and he helped me to understand it's not actually the same. And uh, mine is like, in his conclusion, he says, uh, Adventists, we don't need to be economically inclined. Uh, we don't need to join uh, economic, uh, the economical movement, and he emphasized that we, we are a special church with a special mission, and we can finish that mission even without having to join uh, the movement. And my, my focus in this paper is just, what if we join the economical movement? And uh, I don't need to put on this, but what if I put it on? What will, will happen? Uh, we all know that Jesus' great des greatest desire for his church was unity. And uh, in his prayer, as my uh, friend pastor presented, Jesus desired that his church would be united. And, and in John 17, as uh, many scholars say, this is the greatest prayer. He prayed for unity. Unfortunately, we see Christianity being so much divided, badly divided today. And as I read, you know, about this movement, I was so excited because I thought, here is a movement calling for unity, 
And God's greatest desire for his church is that we will all be united. And I read that uh, Christianity, of course, is the, you know, a small percentage here in Asia. And being small, we are still divided. How much more if all of us Christians here in Asia are united, what would uh, happen as we do our mission? And I will not repeat the things that Pastor already said, um, giving us a little bit background about the beginning of this ecumenical movement. There is one thing I want to highlight that there are two ways we can approach this. One is a call to unite as a Christian community. And the other one is a call by the communical movement to unite uh, all religions, meaning uh, an imam can lead a service in the Catholic church and the priest can also go. I mean, we are all one, but my main focus is uh, uniting together as uh, the unity as, as Christians. When I was in Indonesia, I experienced a little bit of uh, ecumenism. These young people in Indonesia, they call themselves Christians, despite of the different denominations they come from. And I realized that Catholics are still Catholic in Indonesia. They will say, I am a Christian, but if you're a Catholic, you'll still be called a Catholic. This is a little bit amazing, because in my country, we are all Christians, whether Catholic or Protestant. Now, they invited me at the university. There are just a few of them. So they don't care about their differences. So when they invite me, I'm from the Adventist church. Some of them are from Baptist, Pentecostal. They come together, and they appreciate the unity they have just to be Christians. Therefore, don't say anything that will divide us. So I preach, but I only preach about Christ. And I saw the joy of being together. And you know, I, I don't bring in doctrines that will know, uh, you know, make us to hate one another. Not only that, but some of these young people invited me to their church. This was, this is a Gibi church uh, somewhere in BSD city. It's a, I think in a Pentecostal group. And uh, they, the pastor was at the university teaching there. When he met me, he invited me to their Pentecostal church because he says, you preach like a Pentecostal pastor. Come to my church. So I went to his church. I went with my wife. And when I got into the church, I was so excited. You know why? Because during the song service, everybody was dancing. And of course, my wife could not dance because she's uh, so Filipino. So she, just, she was the only one not dancing. I joined the dance and I enjoyed because this is what I had wanted all my life. But of course, <laughs> I, I can't dance in Adventist church. The church board will call me right away. So I said, praise the Lord, and I enjoyed praise, and I jumped, hallelujah. I said, now I am home. But, you know, and I was a speaker. Uh, and after one year, God sent us away from Indonesia. Maybe he, he, so maybe I might be converted to become uh, in that church. But one thing I liked is, every after preaching, of course, they are so generous, they would give me around 900,000 lupia. That's a very heavy envelope, and I would pray, Lord, I pray they invite me again next Sunday. And it was so nice. But during the, our, our meeting, when I would preach, of course, I was cushioned, preach, honor Jesus. And I think that preaching Jesus is not just preaching his love, but also preaching his commandments and he, what he desires us to do. But in this kind of meeting, despite of the joy and happiness of being together, I am limited to preach the whole truth as it should be. And so this was a big challenge. And so I want to bring this one in. Yeah, unity is good, it's wonderful, but then unity at what cost? And we can also see that although unity is good, but there is also a negative side of unity. That Satan can also use unity to go against the Lord. We can be united against the will of the Lord. We can see an example like in the Tower of Babel. These people came together and they have powerful unity and they're doing something which is against the will of the Lord. When you look back in the history of our church, we see that Martin Luther had no desire to separate from the church. He recognized unity and he, he knew the importance of unity, but he had to separate from the church because of his, his beliefs. And so we see at the start of the Reformation, based on the word of God, and as uh, Pastor Christopher really uh, highlighted it in, in, his, in his paper. And, and I just wrote some things here. Uh, that the Seventh Adventist Church recognizes and supports church unity. 
However, as a strongly, however, as a strongly Bible-believing church, its mission and purpose contradicts with that of the ecumenical movement. And for this matter, we cannot uh, really join the ecumenical movement. The Adventist church is aware of the developments in the ecumenical movement. However, it is concerned with the nature of unity that is being promoted. The benefits have well been presented by pastor. I will not again go, them, go into them. But I want to just highlight on the, on, on the risks of uh, joining the ecumenical movement. Number one is failure of uh, uh, church mission. For example, now, I have my friends in, in my class who are not Adventists. We are in the seminary. We are studying together. They have different beliefs. I have different beliefs. You know what? We have never talked to each other about uh, Bible uh, teachings. Why? Because if we do, we do this, I have a thought, hey, you want to convert me. And also you thought, oh, you also want to convert me. So let's just be friends. Let's not talk about this anymore. And so being a part of this will affect our mission as a church. And the other thing, it will also, uh, you know, jeopardize our church unity. You know, even right now, uh, Pastor reported very well that, and I also put in my paper, that we have representatives in the ecumenical uh, uh, movement because they allow people as observers, and I, I'm sure you're aware of this, you might just be an observer, not, not a member. But just now some brethren, you know, when they hear that we have even representatives, they already feel that there's something wrong with our church. Why should they even be there? Just recently, you know, there are some brethren who are disturbed to know that our scholars, our church pastors all over the world from different schools, they went to Rome. And so they were amazed. I think now we have fallen because all our pastors have gone to visit the Pope. <laughs> they are all in Rome, all of them, all our professors. We are now finished as a church. Whom can we trust? But they were there for a different reason. And so joining this will bring uh, jeopardy to our unity. And then, of course, loss of passion for mission. We are all the same. We must be friends, so there is no problem at all. And so our mission will be lost. So in my conclusion, uh, I, I, I conclude that having looked at ecumenism and how it reached the SDA church, it will be a, a compromise and not a cooperation for the Seventh Adventist Church to join ecumenism. And I also agree with my uh, pastor that there are good programs that the uh, ecumenical movement has, you know, like uh, uh, justice and environment and all of these things. And we can come out and support them as a church and join with them. But joining as a member is a compromise to us as a church. So let us hold uh, uniquely the mission God has given to us and share openly with even ministers of uh, the other religions, as Ellen White uh, uh, encourages us to do, without being afraid of, uh, 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 you know, breaking the unity but sharing the truth uh, freely. This is my presentation. Thank you for listening.